Hey, what's up everyone? Fuller here. Thanks so much for checking out the channel and for all you return visitors, appreciate your support. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your first quartz clock. Okay, so there's three parts to this video. The first one is how to set up the quartz clock. We're going to create this, uh, call the quartz subsystem, set the meter, set the tempo, and create a reference variable so we can access the quartz clock and manipulate it. We're going to uh, use blueprint functions to start and stop and to subscribe to quantization events and and then I'm going to do a quick run through of a few other features. So let's jump on in. Okay, so I just have a first person shooter template. It's pretty much empty except for a few textures. Here's our gun. Uh, you know, you just hit play and you run, you pick up your gun and you can shoot it and stuff. We're not going to need to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our level blueprint. Let's right click and type begin play because we're going to use that to do all of our logic. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the quartz subsystem. So we right click and just type quartz right here, boom. Step one, done. Second step is we're gonna drag off here and we're going to create clock, create new clock. And so we're basically telling the engine we want to create a new quartz clock. And then uh, step three, we are going to pull off of here. We're going to set the meter and then we're gonna pull off time signature. We're gonna make quartz time signature. So that's that. So we are creating the new clock with this time signature. You know what, let's give it a name. My first quartz. All right, perfect. That is the clock name. Then we're gonna come over here and we are going to set BPM, set beats per minute. And I've created, I've pulled in a few audio files here at 120 and we're going to uh, just set the course clock to 120. That way we can see how this all works. Okay. So now we have created the clock, we've set the time signature and the tempo. Now we're just gonna create a variable. We're gonna right click here and let's call that uh, my clock. And let's go 120 because that's what the tempo is. All right, there, now we have a reference. The reason we wanna create this reference is so that we can do stuff to it later. Okay, so phase one's done. Now, when we hit begin play, you're not gonna see anything, but we need to know that we have created this new quartz clock. Now, stage two is how we control this quartz clock, okay? So we're gonna come in here. Let's go over here. So actually, let's comment this out, and let's just call this create clock, phase one. Okay, now we're gonna come over here, and we're going to get this clock handle my clock 120. Actually, we can delete this one. We don't need that one. All right. We can drag this out here or we can pull something off here, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to drag it out here for now. We're going to come off this logic and what we're going to do is we're going to start. We're going to just type, drag off there and just type start, start clock. So now when we hit play, we will not only create the clock, we will start the clock and let's hit play. Boom. Okay, so now that we've started the clock, we can actually do stuff with the clock. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to drag off of here, and I want to get the clock again. And I'm just being redundant here, just so we can kind of follow along. And what I want to do is I want to type subscribe. Now, by typing subscribe, what this allows us to do is it allows us to now subscribe to a quantization event on this clock. Which one do we want to subscribe to? Well, whichever one you want. In quantization boundary, you can pick what division you want. So if I go beat, every beat of this clock, once it's started, is going to trigger this quantization event. And what I want to do is I want to drag off here and I want to do a custom event and we're just going to call this beat. Now, every time this beat happens of this clock, it's gonna trigger this event. And to prove this, we're gonna drag out here, we're gonna do drag a print string, and we are going to print the number of bars. And let's go here, compile, save, print, and play. Here we go. One, two, three, 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 four, 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 four. So on every beat, this is printing the bar. Now if I come over here and I go, all right, let's print the beat, okay? Now I'm gonna compile this, hit play. Boom, two, three, four. One, two, three, 
for. It's printing the beats now because remember we set that time signature. Uh, quantization type, you can print that and that's just going to show you we're quantizing it to the beat. So there's a lot of cool things you can do here. Phase two is done. Let's comment this out. Uh, subscribe and start. Call that phase two. All right. So congratulations, you've completed phase two. We've built our clock, we've started our clock and subscribed to a quantization event. Now we can actually fire audio on the clock. So this will be fun. Okay, so I have three, I got a bunch of loops here, but we're gonna pull this loop and this loop. Okay, we're gonna pull this in. We're gonna make sure auto activates off and we're gonna get a reference to this one. Okay, create a reference. And then we're gonna pull this loop in here over here, turn off auto activate, we're gonna get a reference to this one. So now, we are going to trigger these quantized. So I am going to, uh, over here I'm gonna drag off play quantized, okay, and I'm gonna come over here, in clock handle, we'll drag my clock, that's why we created that reference. Let's start this on, um, let's see here. Let's start this on the bar. Every uh, at the top of the bar, we're gonna um, actually let's let's go current uh, transport relative. So this is how much time uh, since the clock started. So let's start this on the second bar, and then let's come over here, and we're going to pull this off here. We're gonna play this one. We're gonna drag this off the same clock. This one we're going to uh, say, let's play this one on the bar, okay, uh, of transport relative. But this one we're going to start this on the third bar, okay, and then we're going to play that. Now we are cooking with Crisco. So here we go. So. This one's gonna start first, and then this one's gonna come in, and you'll hear they'll be perfectly synced. Here we go. Here you go. Cool. So you hear both um, tracks are syn syncing together. But watch this, okay, so let's have a little fun. Let's just trigger this, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm going to enable input and I'm going to uh, get player controller, okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna do a keyboard. Um, so when I hit keyboard M, I'm going to play this quantized and we're gonna play it on the next bar. So check this out. Here we go. We got our first loop that's about to start. Okay, now when I hit M, I'm gonna hit it now. There's the second one dropped in. Three, four, one, two, three, four. That stopped, right? If I hit M again, it's gonna start on the downbeat. And to prove this, I want to print a beat on I want to print beat on every downbeat. So watch this. And then when I hit M, I'm going to print M, but you're going to hear the file not start until the beat. So check this out. Beat, beat, here we go, ready? There's the first one. And now I'm gonna hit M, right, let me, let, here we go. M, there it is, right on the beat. M, four, uh, uh, yep. M, two, three, four, bam. So you can see how these events are all now synced to this Quartz clock. Quartz also has a bunch of other cool features as well. Um, and if you drag off of your variable for the Quartz clock and you scroll down here and you just look under quantization, under Quartz clock, and under quartz clock handle and under quartz subsystem, you can see all of these other options that you have. You can check if the clock's running. 
you can get the duration of quantization in type in seconds you can get uh, the t time signature you can get all of these things so there's lots of cool things you could do you could get what percentage you are between beats and then you could have the user have to input like a rhythm game you have to input be between a certain percentage of beats like within 10 percent or something to be considered correct so there's a lot of cool things that you can do with quartz clock i'm going to do another video um and really do a, a big deep dive on quartz clock but i wanted to get this one out there because i know a lot of people have been asking about quartz clock don't be intimidated by it it's just basically a super advanced kind of metronome uh, scheduling system. It basically allows you to keep track of everything that's happening on the audio render buffer in perfect time so you can make musical things happen in perfect sync with each other. Once the quartz clock sends it to the audio render thread, it's perfectly synced. And so you no longer rely on the game thread for your musical things to happen. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, keep your eye out for some more video on quartz clocks. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. We'll see you in the next video.